just um, to do the introductions, um, our principal has joined us tonight, Mr. Dudek. Um, I'm Charles Gentilly. I am one of the guidance counselors here at BMR. If your student has the last name between A and K, I am their guidance counselor. And I'm Mr. Gulat, the director of guidance, and I have L through Z. So our agenda tonight, we just did introductions. Um, we have selected graduation requirements, the course selection catalog, we'll show you where to find that. We'll talk to you about the changes in our cur curriculum leveling that we're doing for next year. Um, we have a map of courses that your students can take by department and grade, um, so you can follow along with that. How to choose the classroom classes for next year, and then other offerings that we have outside of the standard classroom teacher smart board. All right. However, first, Mr. Dudak is going to share with you a lot about exciting stuff that we have going on, um, and a great tool for you to use going forward. So good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming down. Uh, I know this is a different process than what we've done in the last uh, couple of years. So earlier today, we just were speaking to junior parents, uh, essentially about the college application process and what that looks like. Uh, and the, the one thing that really came back to me was rigor, 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 rigor. And for those eighth grade parents that are here tonight, we really wanted to stress that. Uh, along with the other parents that are here about where our program of studies is today, where it will be in a month, and what that process will look like um, for all of us. Um, so again, thank you for all, for all being here. Um, again, for me, when I look at what I want students to experience um, at BMR, uh, it really comes down to four things for me, and I always bring up four R's. So rigor, relevance, relationships, and realization. Um, and I just want to stress that a little bit uh, before I let the guidance department get into it. I usually am not here. Um, I do typically talk a lot, so I needed to write something on a piece of paper to keep myself about 10 minutes. So when we talk about rigor, uh, we're talking about what courses students are taking. Um, and our juniors are really, um, it's an eye-opening experience for them right now. Uh, because when you look at AP, uh, classes, if you're talking about the college application process, we always hear about SATs, we always hear about college recommendations, we hear about interviews, but to me what's most important is looking at what your master schedule looks like and what courses students are taking. Um, so I'm always going to be pushing students to be taking courses that are more challenging, that are higher level, um, and that's where the AP initiative comes into play. Um, three years ago, uh, or five years ago when I first came on board, we had approximately 10% of our students in the building taking an advanced placement course. So an AP course is, a high, is the highest rigor course that you can go and take in, in high school. It's a national, essentially it's a national course because there's a syllabus that teachers need to follow and there's a standardized test that students take at the end of the year and they receive a one, two, three, four, or five for a score. Uh, when we first started, 10% of our kids took an AP level course, and we just signed up for an initiative called Mass Insight AP Initiative to uh, really advance what's going on in schools and to get students to be able to experience higher level courses. Um, so the traditional getting your department head to sign, having a 4.0 in previous classes, getting the mayor of wherever you're in to sign up for it, for you to be able to take that class. We decided that, you know, we want students that want to take those courses that are motivated enough to do and be challenged. And if they're willing to do that, we want them to be in an AP level course. Now, does it work for everybody? No, but for those students that want to be there, that do the summer work, that are into it, that know and understand the intensity of it, that's what we're looking for. Because at the end of the day, we don't have 10% of our kids going on to college. An AP level course to me is equivalent to a freshman seminar class that kids are going into UMass, Framingham State, BC, BU, wherever that is. And we have a college acceptance rate of students going to about, it's about 78%. So right now we have 50, I'd say there's about 56% of our kids that are graduating with one course that's an AP. Um, and that to me, I think, is a, is a really strong 
piece um, and what college or high school students should be getting. So in, in terms of that, rigor I think is really important. Um, when we look at just relationships, um, I think that we have a strong foundation here at the high school for relationships with our staff and our uh, teachers. Um, again, at the beginning of the school year when I talk to students about high school, I ask them, where else are you going to get 40 adults in one building that care so much about you and that are going to support you and guide you through the whole process? Um, you're not going to find that anywhere else. College, unfortunately, is a lot bigger. Um, there's a lot more independence, and if you want to go and see a teacher about something that you're struggling with, you need to go and sign up for office hours, which could be a Tuesday or Thursday from 2 to 4 o'clock. Um, that's not what it is here. And I will say that a lot of our staff members are involved in clubs, um, in music, in athletics, and so forth. So that relationship building, I think, is really important. When we talk about relevance, um, I'm always talking, thinking about what will get students excited about being in school and what, what are they getting involved in. So again, I think electives are really important. Um, the last couple of years, we've added a bunch of electives that I think um, tie into what is out there in the real world in terms of the skill building. So if we're looking at um, we're looking at statistics in AP, we're talking about robotics or manufacturing, whether we're talking about multicultural literature, those those electives to me are really important. And I know our excuse me, I know our guided staff will be talking about the internships that uh, that are available to our kids and the growing opportunities that we're 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 doing to get there. So just as an example, Johnson and Wales, we're, we're in conversations with them about what can we do from a dual um, enrollment program to have students who are seniors explore culinary arts, explore hotel management, be able to gain credit in college, but also at the same time get that in high school. Uh, that to me is the way of, of, of high school, um, especially in a public school um, that's not vocational, that doesn't have a trade, but we're still creating those pathways for students. Um, so that to me um, is really important. And just to, to finish, the realization that all of us can do better than what we're doing. Um, whether it's getting into college or university, it's about getting a job, it's about <coughs> getting into a class that isn't just a CP class for me to get by. Um, it's about getting onto a sports team or music um, group that to me is really important. Um, when people hear about Blackstone and Millville and those two small towns, no one would think that we are would be a two-time national champion in marching band. No one would know that. Um, that to me is the realization behind what we do and what we offer. Um, so what I want to just share quickly is a uh, website. I know for those eighth grade parents that are here, uh, Mr. Cameron will send this out in an email. I unfortunately don't have all your emails. Um, I have my high school um, parents, so uh, he's going to email out, out this little resource for you. And what I want you to do is just be able to explore, uh, again, this is just a Weebly site that I just learned about. I try to get myself involved with some technology. It's a great way for me to just organize my thoughts and put it into a website. Um, so this is actually our pep rally, and these are yellow is sophomores, right? So these are our sophomores. So if you go to BMR, uh, meet, meet our faculty, you can kind of get a sense of who, who our staff are in the building. Um, so you have a name to a face. If you start looking at um, a, a schedule that you have in front of you and you want to know who is this you know, Mr. Rowe in Algebra 1, uh, you can have a name to a face. Um, this is just a link to our core values and mission. That's, that's a great resource. Uh, on our website, uh, but I want to and if you keep on the program of studies, one-on-one -on -one learning, school improvement plan, uh, there's, there's just a bunch of resources in there. Um, again, for eighth graders who are coming on board, our budget supports one-to-one -one initiatives or one-to-one -one Chromebooks. Right now our freshmen and sophomores have Chromebooks and we're really getting into that and what that looks like from a vision standpoint. Um, again, we're not looking just to throw Chromebooks at kids. Because when we do that, kids will look at that Chromebook as a toy, uh, or a selfie stick, or a gaming device, and not using it as a learning tool. Um, so we're looking into looking at what one-to-one -one, uh, really uh, examines. 
Now, the other piece that I wanted to show is uh, by the numbers. Um, me being a science person, um, I like to be able to show objective data behind everything that we do. So when we, when we talk about AP numbers, um, if you explore this a little bit, this will give you a comparison of some of the towns and communities that make up the Blackstone Valley. Um, and if, if you clearly look in 2016, last year we had 152 exams taken. Again, this is a national exam. This is a national AP exam. And from that qualifying scores, percentage was, was 56.6%. So if you score three, four, or five, um, students have the potential of getting a credit for that AP English class that they're in. Um, not every college will take the AP uh, test, but um, a couple years ago, we had a student that went to Clark University. She had five qualifying scores and she had five credits essentially to her name that she earned at Clark. So when she walked in the door, she was already a second, uh, well, not a, she was a second semester freshman based off of the credit. So there's a financial piece behind that, there's also timing behind that, but it's also a great way to just to, be, just to prepare for what, what's out there in the college world. And I will tell you that a lot of families are really thinking about what are my options? I know there's other schools out there that, you, that students choose or families look at, but they're looking back at BMR and saying, this is a place where my son or daughter can grow and be prepared for college. And I will tell you that when you look at the numbers, excellence will support what we do here. Um, so again, 56.6, and if you explore, I won't point out certain districts, but you see uh, what's out there. And these are all exams. So just as an example, in biology, we had 12 exams. Again, this is a smaller cohort of, of students. But of that, we have 58.3% that received a qualifying score. That says a lot. Uh, and again, it's not my opinion. It's a fact of what we're doing here at the high school. And my goal is to be able to continue that and talk about rigor, and talk about academic excellence, and talk about preparing students for college and the real world. And the reason why I can do that is because we have a full curriculum, 183 days, or 183 days. We talk about academics, uh, along with everything else. Uh, so that is something that I would love for you to go and take a look at um, in terms of the numbers. Um, again, that's why I'll but here's English, we have 18 at 67%, qualifying scores. English literature, 61%. Chemistry, again, if you look at all these numbers, they're really low. Chemistry, AP chemistry is tough. And those kids that get in it, they're working. But we had, last year, 11 students take it at 18.2% that did that. Um, and that, to me, is a testament, again, of what we do from teaching and learning. Um, History, uh, calculus, this is another, I think, great number to see. We have 21 in calculus AB at 47.6%. Uh, world history, uh, which was, uh, that was a great number. We had 30 at 73%. Um, and again, all exams. The other piece, additional resources. If you go through, you'll see the main page, the guidance page. There's a video lab um, with all the videos that we do here at the school. And this to me, I think, was really, was really neat to see. This is a freshman alphabet. Uh, so when, last year, our Stuco kids created this to get kids to think about what should we do in college, or what, how, how do you survive high school? And that, I thought it was a, was a neat thing to do. So again, if you're here for middle school, You'll get the weekly site. Please explore it. Please look at it. I, I, I'm going to add to that as much as I can um, in terms of various electives and extracurriculars as well. Um, we're, I'll add the PowerPoint that guidance will be showing tonight so that you see that. Uh, but again, data to me, I try to be as direct and objective as possible so that doesn't lead to interpretation of what we do or what we don't do. It's there for everyone to see. That makes sense for everyone? So again, thank you for being out here today. I'm gonna to give it to guys. I, I think I went over my 10 minutes. So thanks guys.
Thank you, Mr. Jubeck, for taking time away from your family, too. Um, so we're going to go on to um, graduation requirements. And those requirements um, for your juniors going to seniors have changed this, um, this coming senior class. Now to graduate from high school, you can go to class. To graduate from BMR, you need four years of English, four years of math, which is a change. This is graduating class this year only needed to have three. This is the last graduating class that needs three. That's um, a mass core. Um, Massachusetts, all public high schools in Massachusetts now, you need four years of math to graduate. Three year, um, which includes algebra, geometry, and algebra two. Those three courses must be completed and passed um, to earn your diploma. Three years of social studies, which must include US one, US two, and world history. <laughs> three years of science, two years of a foreign language, two years of PE wellness, one year of technology, pass the MCAS, and ELA math and science, and have 24 credits. Any questions about the graduation requirements? Yes. Um, I have US 1 and I have AP US. That's two years of US, that's fine. Yep. Yep. Thank you. So that was just well, that's me. That was just <laughs> that um that was just a note to myself to go to the course catalog. <laughs> Uh, no, it's the calendar, so, yeah. It's under Mike's, um, he has one of the freshmen. He won't go back there, he go back. And, yep, additional resources. Yep, and then, um, guidance may be you can You find a course catalog on the guidance website, and you can scroll down, and right there to your right is the program of studies. It's there in English, it's there in Spanish, it's there in Portuguese, okay? Um, the program studies will not be printed this year. It is only going to be online. We did print uh, enough for eighth graders who are rising to the ninth grade. We will be bringing them down to the middle school, um, I believe, Thursday, Mr. Cameron um, gave us a date and time. But we'll be bringing those books down there so you'll have a hard copy of it. Um, it is by department. And if you, um, hold on. Let's go up a little bit. It, there is a, um, a little bit further. There is a write-up about each class, um, what you can, what in class entails, and there's a link if you so choose to go there for each class to the Massachusetts, the Commonwealth, the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education. There's a link to the frameworks for that class if you choose to dig deeper into curriculum. We have that um, on the in the program of studies. It'll tell you um, what the level is as well as what the um, weight is for each class. Does everybody um, uh, have any questions about what I'm talking about when I say level and weight? So the level is what level are you taking at? Are you taking college prep? Are you taking that honors? Are you taking that pre-AP? Are you taking the AP? And then the weight that goes with that, it, each level has a weight. So if you're taking a CP course, the weight that goes with that is 1.05. If you're taking an honors class, the weight is 1.1. It's more rigorous, so your grade in that class is going to give you more points. A pre-AP is 1.15. Again, more rigorous, therefore your grade will be inflated on, based upon that, because an A and a pre-AP should be worth more than an A and an honors and an A and um, CP level, and then the same for an AP is level. The uh, weight is 1.2. So you can see all of that in the um, level. Wait, could you say that again? Can you, can you say the four levels? Could you say the four again? Because yeah. I, I thought you sure. said the same for yeah. the AP. And so there's there's AP. four levels, and we'll get into that as well tonight about the leveling changes that are occurring at the high school next year. So CP is college prep, and, and I'll take this opportunity because I've had parents. After school starts, say, oh, I thought college prep was the hardest. College prep is the easiest. Okay. It's college prep, it's accepted by all colleges, but it's the easiest level. That's the level. Then the next level up is honors. We used to have um, an advanced level this year and in the past. Next year we're doing away with the advanced level. So the next level above CP is honors. And that's, that is at a 1.1 weight. Um, okay. um. 
I just didn't know. Oh, you did? Okay. So I found this in the meantime because I know exactly it's the different levels, the weight, and what that kind of means. So this is a nice chart because he's explaining it really great, but sometimes it's easier. I like the chart. Um, so if you get your score achieved, and then the different courses, so let's pretend I got a 95. If I took, if I got a 95 in an AP course, it really comes out to like a 114. So that translates into that GPA. So where you're averaging all your courses. So this is a little clearer, I think, to see. This is also on the website where I pulled it from. But that's. Is it on the PMR website? Yeah. So okay. let me. Where did I? Your honor is this. Is there's a typo? It says 1.0. It's supposed to be 1.1. On that chart. Yeah, yeah, on that chart. Thank you. Yeah. But this is where that chart was. And so the introduction to the program of studies. You might have got a little confused because I said pre-AP and then AP, so that's that, that's a change um, as well. So when we pull advanced out, we're adding pre-AP. <coughs> so that course catalog has written descriptions of all of our courses. It has the level to the course. It has the weight to the course, and it has a link to the Massachusetts framework, so you can dig deeper into the curriculum. Okay? So here's, again, we talked about the leveling. This is what a college prep CP level, this is the description of, of a college prep course, what you can expect your students to be doing and what the expectation of all of our college prep courses, um, the, the content in which they're going to be learning. Honors. Go back a little, so that they can absorb it a little bit. <coughs> Pre AP. I'm trying to find a new way. <coughs> and of course, AP. <coughs> can I ask a question? Yeah. Why did you change advance to pre AP? What was the kind of so advance isn't that? no advance isn't pre AP. Pre AP is um, advance is out. Right. And pre, pre AP. But here it says the pre AP said something that's what advanced was in the last slide. So honors is what advance was, and okay. pre AP is a new a new level. Is okay. it higher? Yes, than honors. Okay. Yes. Is it higher um, than the advanced that it is now? This year? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So if, it, if you're looking for a tier, yeah. what used to be CP, advanced, honors, AP, is now CP, honors, pre-AP, AP. Okay? Yeah. So reasoning. We had a lot of discussion as um, department heads um, and a faculty. So one of the concerns with the advanced level is colleges would some often say to me, what is advanced level? What is that? And I explained to them, I point to our profile, and they said, okay, so how do I level that? Because we, we don't have advanced levels in college. We've never seen that. So what we did is we did some research. We looked around to other high schools, not only in this area, but throughout Massachusetts. We couldn't find one single high school that had an advanced level of curriculum. Not one. Not a single school. So that led us to be like, okay, so why do we have this? Because <laughs> no other school has it. So what we did, basically we got rid of it. And other schools do have pre-AP, which is the, the, if you think about it, the lead into an AP class. Um, so that's the, that's the drive that we took. What it will do, and it's, I'm just being honest with you, is it may take a student who was an advanced level course this year, now they have a decision to make. Are they, going to, are they comfortable with the curriculum content area, let's just use English for example, to move up to honors and potentially have to have a little bit more rigor or go down to CP which will be a little less rigor and then that decision to make. There's going to be, what, what we hope will happen is that will take the CP courses that exist now and add to the rigor to make it more rigorous. And then the students who are at advance going into the honors and potentially pre-AP to give them even more rigor. 
and it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a transition that's gonna take some time to swim into, if you will, because it's a change. Um, but that's that's um, was the, that was the theory. We did the research of other schools, couldn't find it, and um, it started. The conversation started because the colleges were saying, "What is this advanced thing?" Yes. Our students, for these students that are kind of in between things and trying to figure themselves out with your new rank, mm -hmm. ranking system, are they better off going higher? Will guidance allow them to get out within the first couple of weeks yeah. if they think they're over their head, or are they stuck? No, they're not stuck. They're not so stuck. They're much better off starting high. Going I, I would, I would high say, high. come meet with us, and we can look at data points. Like we can, we can look at, and there's, when I say data points, I, I mean a lot of things. I don't only mean your grade in last year's English class. I mean your attendance. I mean going into that grade and saying, okay, you had, the reason why you got an 84 was because you tested well, but your homework grade was a 64. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? And that's the data point that we look at with a, going into AP. Like, okay, you have a good, you're a good student, but you got a 64 for homework. That ain't gonna fly in AP. So when I say we look at, we'll, we'll sit with them and look at data, it's not just a grade. It's digging deeper in that grade. It's looking at their attendance. It's, you know, having a verbal conversation with mom or dad and be like, what does studying really look, for, look like at home? <laughs> Is it, also, yeah, I do it. <laughs> do you also, when you're looking at children who are, you know, picking their courses, whatever, yes, this is the teacher approves it. Do you also look at, okay, if you take this class, this is gonna be your path. For when, you're yes. here, when you're seeing it, to yep. make sure that they can continue, like if they're going to go to the advanced in AP, like if they're going to take, you know, my son will be a um, software next year. So if he's going to take two AP classes, is he going to continue to be able to go on that track, or is he going to say, okay, you took the two APs, now what's available for you? Exactly. And <laughs> we're going to show you a slide of exactly what you're talking about and how you can start it in one place and go to the next. Because let's face it, our, we're hoping that our kids add, get academically more mature <laughs> um, and that they can see that they can switch tracks to a more rigorous class in a subject matter if they want to. What year do you suggest they start taking AP classes in? Um, sophomore year is when they're first available. Mm -hmm. What year do we suggest you start with them? That's really a, a Kid by kid basis, you know. Um, we we, on, we will tell you. We have real conversations with students. The student I have in mind that Mr. Tilly had back and forth conversations about about a push AP U.S. history that went back and forth so much that you would think you were watching a ping pong game. And it was a genuine conversation. It was real heart to heart, sweat to sweat, tear for tear decision. Um, and some kids. They take that risk and then they get scared. They get the encouragement from us. We, we have conversations with teachers, you know, but we, they have the opportunity to take their first AP tech class in sophomore year. And we'll get to that, that uh, curriculum mapping that you were talking about in a moment. Sorry, no question. No. What, now, because you changed this kind of like midway for kids that have already started, mm -hmm. what if they're not on the right path to take an AP mm -hmm. class next year? Um, because, have, of a, because of a class that they took this year. Like if they had to, if they were put into a lower level, like do you have to take pre-AP before you- No, no, oh, okay, before, I see what you're saying. Or can so you go I hear what you're saying. to AP? Like I hear what you're saying. So pre-AP, as you hear it, thinks that you have to have it as a prerequisite to get in. That's not necessarily the case. So you can go from honors to AP. Correct. Or from CP to AP. Correct. And then what if, so if they're in advance this year, or that they're in advance, yeah. Would they be recommended for, or could they be recommended Absolutely, because again, the relevance of the class that they may be sitting in, there, there's other variables. There's, there's that work ethic. There's the homework grade. There are other oh, yeah, things. No. So, so like, you, you don't necessarily have to have the pre to get into that AP. Yeah, and with there, the AP, with the Mass Insight, we have no prerequisites right now, which is great because it does open it up. And again, if there were any concerns, you know, let's pretend, wouldn't be the case, but I want to go into AP Cal. We haven't taken Advanced Algebra 2, so let's hit that one first, you know. So we'll make sure that, I think, kind of what you're asking, our curriculums are still generally aligned, the tracks, 
with what we had before. So no kid should really be barred um, because the track shift. But there might be conversations of, you didn't take that advanced algebra two yet, so let's let's take that first. So you have the strong foundation before that. And that's when we would call you up and have that conversation if anybody's doing that. But they, the tracks, although they have changed, are still relatively aligned. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to find that. Who is that word about? Is it? Yeah, that should be the track. Yeah, yeah, earlier in this one. This is the one. Yeah. All right, so. No, no, please don't. I had to go back. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. This? No. Where's the one that I knew? Like? Yeah. So here's, um, here's, I think, to answer your question as well with, this is the grade distribution and by, um, by department. So a ninth grader comes in, in social studies, it's easy, ninth grade is easy because the history, social studies department, there's no levels. It's only all one level for every kid. So that's not a very good example to start with, but they would take US 1. Then from there, 10th grade, they would go into either AP, US 2, honors, US 2, college prep. And based, it's the same exact way as it's always been, based upon dialogue, teacher recommendation, parent input, and breaking down into it deeper. What's different in the history department is the electives, American pop music, street law, and history through film are now available for ninth graders through 12th graders. They used to only be available for 11th and 12th graders. Now they're available for 9th, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. In addition to that, they're also available at college prep or honors level. And that's new too. It used to be just, a, like street life used to be just a CP class. And now it's just, you can choose, do I want this CP or do I want this honors? And then the, um, also cheap, there's a new class being offered for junior and senior year in history. History through film is new. Juniors and seniors, um, and so it's decades U.S. That's formerly U.S. History Three. The name of it has changed to call um, to call decades. English, CP, and honors. Nothing's changed there except for the advanced coming out. English ten, English eleven. The AP course of choice is AP language. There may be some juniors currently who are in. Uh, AP Lit right now will allow them to take AP Lang if that's the case. Um, but we're driving down a pathway of 11th graders taking language, language and 12th graders taking literature. The next couple years there may be some interchange, but that's okay. Um, and the electives, if you scroll up a little bit. <laughs> so once English 10 is done, you get to English 11. Those electives in the English department are considered electives but they're also new English credit, because you need four years of English. So you can take um, creative writing and American lit. That's both, in, both those courses are English credits. But we don't want to, um, we don't want to close off students who have already taken four years of English to feel like they can't take another English class. It's considered an elective. Math, this is where our incoming ninth graders will have the ability to take pre-AP Algebra 2. Then the next year, they will take pre-AP Geometry and or double up AP Stats. For 10th grade, 11th grade, pre-AP Calculus or AP Stats if they haven't taken it, and then senior year, AP Calc and or AP Stats. And this one I just wanted to point out, because I think this might have been closer to what maybe you were talking about earlier, and kids being maybe off track. This one I would say, math is our, I'd say our most stringent track. Um, in regards to following along because you need Algebra 1 before Algebra 2 and Calc. Um, like you said, if you look under the 10th grade, you know, if you really want to get back onto that AP Calc track because maybe you started off in Advanced Algebra versus the Honors Algebra 2, you can double up your second year and bump up to the AP Calc. This is the only one, but this has been the same, has nothing to do with how we change the names of the courses. But I'd say your math track is the only one that's really tight to, you know, those foundational courses. Anybody have any questions about the math? So for a student who wants to double up sophomore year to get them to be able to have the ability to take AP Calc 
senior year, they may double up sophomore year to get to that. Otherwise, you just can't get there. Another change we have is in the science department. Ninth graders coming in will be taking integrated science. In the past, they took biology one. And then sophomore year, biology two. So now our college prep level students will take integrated science and then biology in 10th grade. Honors students will take biology in ninth grade, chemistry in 10th grade, and they have choices in junior and senior year. Or they can take the pre AP bio in ninth grade, pre AP chem, or AP bio in 10th grade, and then you can see your options below in the door. Foreign language, um, CP or honors for Spanish one and two, and then we have honors level Spanish three and four and French three and four. PE wellness, 9th and 10th graders have to take that. 11th and 12th graders, there are electives in PE and wellness. And then this is, um, this is the heart of most of our electives. We have integrated arts, video one and two, graphics one, two, and three, Adobe and digital Photoshop, there's our, our music hasn't changed. Um, Foundations of Arts hasn't changed. I'm trying to see, um, there's a new class in technology called Digital Literacy, and it's gonna be, for, no credit will be received. That's going to be a one quarter enrichment course to just get more familiar with the Chromebooks or anything digital literacy wise that a student may wanna take. Um, there's no credit involved, it's just taking a quarter class at our, our school library and media uh, specialist is going to coordinate. Does that help with your question in regards <coughs> to the ability to, there, there is a track, but there is the ability to go um, up or even down, you know, and that happens too, you know, yes. It, is that somewhere on the website or via email, that, what you just that showed there? us, those boxes? Yeah, I, I think I put it there. If not, it's very simple for me to do. Um, so if it isn't there, I can put it there. It will be in the same spot. Um, it isn't in that. It will be in the same spot on the right hand side under the program of studies. It will be right there. It's just a good, good to see. It's a good visual, right? Right. Yeah. yeah. So I think um, I'll sh let me just do other uh, um, the other offerings, and we'll show them how to go on. So there are other options, other offerings outside of the standard teacher, student, whiteboard. We have internships, yep. It might be more of a budget question, but is there ever going to be business electives offered or are they always going to be arts and science electives? That's a really good question. And, it, and that's really a, a, my question. It's a, it, of course, everything you know is budget. Um, and just so you know how this actually even works. So we have the program of studies here, but if, Five kids sign up for the web design class. The chances of that five that look that class running for five kids is probably not going to happen. So, whereas we have a whole menu for you to eat from, we need a lot of you to eat <laughs> for us to be able to serve you. It was just a few years ago. We used to have business, personal finance, accounting, and then the numbers weren't necessarily coming through. But yeah, so I mean that may be something you could see, but in regards to when or where, but. And this is where we're trying to be progressive. Um, we do have internship opportunities. And we have, so internships traditionally have been go find a teacher and go, go work with that teacher for the year or the semester. Last year we tried to branch that out a little bit and say go into the community, find an internship. And it was successful. We had three students that went to the police department and they did the internship with the police department. Two, one of which wasn't going to college at all. And his mom called me and said, I don't know who you are, I don't know what you are, but my kid wants to go to college because you gave him an internship with the police department and I just gotta thank you. So he wasn't going to college. And then he goes, went and sat with the police department in an internship and now he's in school to become a police officer. So the internships can be real life learning opportunities and we encourage it. We have a student that's at the, at the elementary school down the road doing her internship. We have students um, at the library. We have students in the police department. We have students with um, the ambulance um, out of Millville. So basically the internships are whatever you, if you can find one, then we support you, okay? Um, we do the best we can to help you. Um, 
to do that. I make phone calls with students and sometimes, unfortunately, the door is closed on me because that opportunity that they have is for college students, not high school students. But you know what? I would, if I didn't ask, I would never know. So if you have a student who is interested in veterinary, then have, go knock on the door of, a, of um, the veterinary clinic in town and see if they'll take an intern for one day a week or one day every other week. You have to do 36 hours within the semester, which is not hard to do, and then write a paper at the end. Basically, it's just what you learned and what you've grown. Um, so there's opportunities outside of the classroom for learning. And then you have dual enrollment. So dual enrollment is, um, it's been around for a long time. We have a dual enrollment partner with, ship with our ICC. CCRI. CCRI, I'm sorry. I'm not in the uh, CCRI, Quinn Sig, and a new one developed with Johnson and Wales that we met with two weeks ago, um, which is a phenomenal opportunity with Johnson and Wales, and we already have a student interested in it. So dual enrollment is, I'm not gonna come to BMR for my senior year. Instead, I'm going to college at CCRI or at Johnson and Wales. So the CCRI one is, um, it's, it's a good deal, but you're going to do general ed studies, your, your gen eds. The Johnson and Wales one is different. Johnson and Wales is going to ask Ms. Gentile and I, what does the student need to graduate from high school? What courses? Usually it's English and math, because it's a four-year requirement. Then they will say, here's our course catalog. Does this class here at Johnson and Wales meet your requirement for English class? Does this class meet your requirement for, your math, for a math class? Yes. We're going to give them those two classes, and then they're going to have eight more classes to choose from, whatever they want in a major. They have to pick a major. The student that we're working with is going to do political science. So she's going to get into her major at Johnson Wales next year as a senior and start college. We will accept the credits for her graduation, but she will be a student at Johnson Wales. Johnson Wales significantly reduces the price of tuition to half cost and offers um, financial aid if need be. And thinks of that student as a student that's in college. They can live on campus if they want to live on campus. If they're an athlete and they want to play sports, they can play sports for Johnson & Wales. They are a college student, duly enrolled with us as a partner. Some kids, that works for them. Some kids, they don't want to miss the social part of their senior year. That's okay, because we're here. But it's just an opportunity for maybe that academically more mature, or like I can think of one student who's a sophomore who next year is going to be as a junior in calculus, and we're not really going to have a math class for him. He transferred here with high levels of math. So one reason why he came to us, school choice, was because of the ability to not come here senior year and go duly enroll somewhere else as a college student. You can walk onto your campus as what would normally be a freshman and be a sophomore. So we have outside the box thinking and progressive thinking about how we can support your students to be the best them that they can be. And with that being said, the social life, they can still participate at events here at BMR, senior prom, senior week, the trip. They can't in fact play the sports uh, for MIA because we can't mandate follow that attendance and everything for a class on the college campus, but it ends up being nice. They get their BMR diploma and they get some credits towards that college um, a year early, so it's nice. It may be cool. Yes. For the internships, is that only for seniors or is that for seniors? Very good question. It's for juniors and seniors. Yes. in the curriculum for a certain type of class for students to get basic life skills, resume writing, interviewing skills, budgeting, a bank account, or yeah. Check just those life skills. Basic life skills. Yeah. So we do some of that in guidance, um, but next year um, there's going to be more opportunities for that um, because the schedule might look a little bit differently. Where there's going to be timeouts taken for that to take place right during the day, but in addition to that. I'm going to, my son is coming here next year school choice as a freshman, so, and he's an athlete, so I'm gonna be here late every day. So, I'm already trying to catch up on sleep now, but um, 
I'm going to be offering seminars for a lot of those soft skills. Um, or for, you know, I'll have one day maybe I'll open it up in the library to need help with a common app if you're a junior. Or how to write a check, how, where to put a stamp on an envelope. For real? <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> um, they, my kids like, they need stamps. Um, no so, whole curriculum, but we do touch base on that. And also, as we kind of progress further, depending on where the students' needs are or post-secondary plans, we also start to open up workshops. I just took a whole group of uh, juniors and seniors to, um, a, I guess you could call it a career fair, but we worked on interview skills, resume skills, and they actually had people come in from workforce, um, they're in Milford to talk about kind of some of those skills, which is nice. So even if we start to identify, oh, who are those skills that kids that need to you know, be exposed to that even further than what we do during the school day, we provide opportunities outside as well. So it's been, it was a great workshop. I think some kids are leaving some actual jobs afterwards after going there, so it's kind of neat. And, you know, it is, not every kid's going to college. So every kid who leaves this school is gonna have a plan. And if it means they're going to work, they're leaving with a resume. And hopefully, you know, there's only two of us in guidance, and we do a lot. Social, emotional, it's everything else. But hopefully, I can get us to a point where the week before graduation day, that week, we can have seminars when the kids will kind of say, I mean, instead of staying home and sleeping, come in and have seminars about, you know, finance especially, you know, how to play the game of, you, you have three credit cards, how to transfer a balance to a 0% interest rate for six months and not pay interest and play that game. How not to go on a college campus and have them in your face about getting a credit card at 25% interest and then you think it's free money. Um, those kind of things before graduation so they're aware. But it, it is um, something we just need to put in. Yes? Are VHS courses still offered? VHS, thank you for asking. Um, yeah, we actually have some VHS courses that are available. VHS courses are available. me that. We still have the plethora of VHS courses that are available. VHS courses um, count as a tech credit and a credit in that curriculum area. So if a student is, I just had one today actually, she's like, can my internship count as a, as a um, tech credit? I was like, no. But don't we have a VHS class? Yeah, well, that's your tech credit. It's on, hello, it's on a computer. So um, we do have the plethora of VHS and it counts as a credit towards the curriculum as well as the tech credit. That's a good question. So it, before Mr. Dudek got here, before I got here, the principal in, put into the VHS that if you take a VHS credit is worth one full credit. Even if it's a half semester long, it's worth one full credit. So it is worth one full credit. When can kids take VHS classes? 10, is 11, I mean. It's really open for any student. Um, we only have 25 spots per semester. It is granted upon seniority. Um, so there's that, but we've been able to, with the exception of last year, last year, we did freshman, um, we've been a freshman I think second semester, yeah. um, but we even, we've been able to provide any student interested in VHS, even last year we ended up getting extra funding to provide students, we had such a high interest in VHS courses that we were still able to provide funding for those students to take the VHS courses. So if your kid ends up stuck in a study hall, that's a good option? Mm -hmm. if, if they want it, yeah, in um, their seats. It goes seniority, seniors go first, juniors, sophomores. But if there's a VHS seat, I absolutely want to use it. I don't want them to sit in there, nothing, doing and nothing. We advertise them. I think we had some extra spots this left this semester. And, we and then, use them up. yeah, we ended up because we advertise them, so we yeah. used them up. It, those, those, um, there was an announcement about that like for two weeks. And, and how, how is it set up, the VHS classes? So that's, so. I'm going to ask for clarification of the question. How's it set up in the school or how's the curriculum set up? Because that's two different answers. Well, let's do both. Okay, so the VHS is set up here is that it goes on their schedule as a class and they go to the library media center and they do their work in, um, in the library oh, yeah. every do day. Just, any, do they have any support from a BMR staff? There's a little uh, librarian is in there to provide support in regards to the technology. And then if they're having trouble with a content area, content teachers like Mr. Rowe is, uh, is available for the math help. Um, but the problem is, is that those classes are run every period of the day. So Mr. Rowe may not be off, so you can't go run to ask Mr. Rowe for help. But you can talk to Mr. Rowe right. to make an appointment. Um, but with that being said, it's, it's not a platform where you're gonna get a lot of support from the teacher on the other end. 
It's, it's very, very, very independent. Very independent. And I would highly, I would actually, forget highly, I would not suggest, based on learning on my part, that any student take a math class on VHS, especially high level math class, because it's going to be independent. You're, you're teaching, basically you're teaching yourself. Um, and it's hard, it's difficult. The teacher on the other end is there to collect work and assign work and grade the work. They're not really there to have much dialogue with you other than that. And so that it's a lot of independence. Yes. And we, um, those are not, we'll have conversations with those two just as we would with an AP course as they want to take physics. Said, ooh, let's talk about that because math wasn't necessarily their strong point. She ended up trying it and she ended up dropping it because it was too tough, despite we had the teacher here. But that's again, we have the conversation with the student. We bring the parent in because it's important. Or we had a student, they, they're actually taking a full year of Latin. That might have been last year, but oh, they took year. Latin. Oh, it is yes. this year. We don't have a Latin teacher. So we had that kind of conversation at home. Where are you going to be able to get that support? Because no one here speaks Latin or teaches Latin. So we'll have those conversations as well if there's any kind of concerns about support within the school and where can they look for those other resources. If the way I learn, I'm much more auditory, sitting there reading uh, passage day after day, or maybe just seeing a YouTube video here and there, it's not the best for me. That's okay. I learned very quickly in college. All my classes aren't for me. Um, and that's the variable, I think. Yeah. You know, I remember, I know a student who, that's what we learned. <laughs> Online may not be the best. As you go to college, realize maybe online isn't the best way for you to take your courses. However, with that being said, the student failed the class but scored a, a three, four, or five on the AP test. So he, he was his own best teacher, to be honest with you. <laughs> so it, it's you know, kudos to him, really. Um, so the VHS is available 25 seats per semester, each semester 25 seats. And last year we did have like an overinflation of the VHS, so we were able to get the funding for that. If there's one trickle over, not so much, but if we have that large interest, it was last year, we were able to um, go and hunt down extra funds for those extra seats. Any questions, more questions? Do you want us to show you really quick how to get into choosing your courses um, on the website? So we are going to talk about selecting and requesting courses for your upcoming year. When you first start out, you want to head to the BMR High School homepage, which you can go right ahead and type in www.bmrhs.com, and this will bring you to the homepage. The students will need to access the X2 themselves. Do not use the parent portal. Sometimes that happens. So in order I'm going to pause it real quick. Our website interface has changed, so it looks different. But the process, so with logging in, it will look the same from here on out. So just to do that, the students will go to the Students tab. They will drag all the way down to My BMR SD. Click on that link. This will direct you to a new page. At the top, it'll say My BMR SD. Click on the link. Students, scroll down to X2 and click on that. This will bring you to the X2 homepage. Here you will go ahead and enter in your student ID, which you should have already received. Enter in the username and password and click log on. Once that opens up, you want to click on the tab My Info. Then you want to scroll down to the bottom left and click on the tab Request. 
At this page, you will see every subject area represented. Also, you should have seen what your teachers have recommended to you. We went ahead and cleared this student's schedule out as we have already made her schedule, but you can go ahead and pick the courses you prefer. You always want your core courses, English, Math, Science, and History. You can go ahead and pick your foreign language, PE, or any other electives that you need to fulfill the BMR graduation requirements. For the student, you can click on English, click the tab Select, and we're just waiting for a pop-up window to appear, and here it is. For every level, the courses that you are able to select should be noted for you. Since the student is a junior, going to be a senior, these are the courses that she is eligible to take. If you're a freshman, your courses will look a little bit different. Same for being a sophomore or junior. So I know the student is interested in taking multicultural literature, so I'm gonna go ahead and click, as if I were the student, multicultural literature, and then click OK at the bottom. Once you see that, you will notice that the request has appeared on the main screen. I'm gonna go ahead and select the rest of her courses for her. I click on select under the art subject area. Click the course advanced ceramics. Checked it off, so I'm gonna click okay. I know she wants to take video production. So I clicked on the tech tab, checked off video production. Click OK again. And then I'm going to do the same for the rest of the courses. Then at the bottom, if for some reason a course wasn't appearing or maybe a course re was requested by your teacher and you weren't interested, you can go ahead and write a note for the counselor to see. For instance, a student wanted to know if they could take street law. So I will go ahead and write, I was wondering if I could also take street law. This will notify the counselor that maybe we need to make an override or see if we can switch something in their schedule to hopefully make this work. After your notes have been put in and after you've selected all your courses, on the bottom left, you want to click this post button. Once you click that post button, your counselor will be able to see it on their end of X2, which will appear differently. Other than that, you are all set. You should look forward to having a meeting with your counselor if you are currently in the high school and talk about your schedule there. If you're an eighth grader, you can have your parent call or you can email the guidance counselors up at the high school and they will certainly help you out. Other than that, good luck and I uh, hope you get your schedule for next year. Do have any questions? Yes. When does the window open for tomorrow? Tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> and are they doing it with guidance counselors or do they do it at home? They can do it at home. They can wait and come see the, us. It doesn't matter. Um, Either way. Are you meeting with students throughout the Yes. Like we're going to be meeting happen? with every single student. Um, the, we'll, over the course of like probably a month, it'll take to get to everybody. Have the teachers already recommended courses? Oh, yes. Yep. I pulled a report on Monday. I, haven't, I didn't do it today, but on Monday, there were only two teachers that hadn't recommended yet. And I went and had a conference. Their window doesn't clo close. Their window closes on the 17th, which is Friday, right? Yeah. I think it is. Um, the open window closes Friday, but with that being said, every teacher's already done except for two, and I just I followed up with them, and hopefully it's done now. And just because the teacher recommended doesn't necessarily mean the student has to take. That can be a dialogue between you as a family, the parent, myself. You know, it doesn't have to be that way. That's just what they recommend. Is it first come, first serve for when they want to pick classes? I'm sorry? Is it first come, first serve for when they want to pick? Meet with us? No, like when they, if like if they go online and pick everything, is it? So that, that's a good question, actually. Thank you for asking that. So the way this works is, the kids choose their schedules. Then, what's that? Their requests. Excuse me, their requests. Then, like I said earlier, if only five kids want a class, that class isn't going to run. It doesn't financially make sense. So we get all the data, we get all, and then I hand it over to Mr. Dudek. And Mr. Dudek then runs a schedule for the school. He tells, he, he looks at the numbers and says, okay, there's uh, 55 kids who want English 9 honors. So I know I need three sections of that. So he tells X2, I need three sections of this. So he plugs all that in, and then he just, he, it does an automatic run. And what the system does is it creates a schedule for every kid in the school so that the system has, a, the school has the highest percentage possible of kids scheduled. 100% is ideal. 
doesn't really happen. So if it, let's say it's at 93 percent, he's run it six, seven, eight, nine times. He he run he ran it once. It was at 84. He moved where AP Lang was going to be to a different period. He moved Band to a different period. We ran it and it had a higher percentage. So that's what he does. He runs it many times, moving things around to see if he can get it to a higher percentage. Once he's done that 50 to 60 times, and he's got it as high as he can get it, he, he, he freezes it. And that's where we come in to meet with students one-on-one -on -one to say, okay, you wanted street law, it's bumping up against APUS or it's and band. <laughs> what do you want to do? Do you want to not take AP US and or band and take street law? Like how important is that to you? So that's where we have those conversations. Those conversations will be hopefully taking place this year because Mr. Jake's goal is to have students leave this school with a schedule in their hand in June. That's that's I'm, 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 that's always the goal. It's I've never seen it happen. Hopefully we can get to that. The only problem I foresee that happening is if X2 doesn't allow us, because of state reporting, to take those eighth graders and move them into the high school before the school year is done. I don't see how that can happen, because the state has reporting that has to get. So if we move those kids out of the middle school, that's a problem. But we'll do the best we can. And if it's not the last day of school, as soon as that state allows us to move those kids, it's ready to go. And then we, um, yep, go ahead. When does it need to be completed by for selection? Um, I think the deadline is, it's a, it's a month. So if it's opening tomorrow, it's April. It's, it's, I think I didn't even do the April 16th. I think I did like the last day of April vacation. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I was like, oh, that's a week break from April vacation. Why not? Why? Because I know I'm not going to be able to do much with it a week of April vacation. So just, I think that's my, but it's like a month and a week or two. It's open for a long time. Yep. Um, are you going to be meeting with the eighth graders to talk about this and whether yes. they be selecting their So I'm, um, I'm, we're going down there next week okay. to speak with them, show them how, um, and have conversations with eighth graders. And I, I understand they're eighth graders, so they, you know, they're, they may come home and be like, yeah, some guy in a tie came down, but I don't know what he talked to me about. <laughs> <laughs> um, but ask for a purple book. <laughs> They'll come with that, and our emails and phone numbers are online. You can always, we also encourage you, basically from this point forward, if you have any questions, call us, because we live it every day, and we can give you the answers that you're looking for. And if you want to come up with the student for whatever reason, feel free to. Yeah. Um. Yes, I believe. Yeah. And if, and if for whatever reason you can't. Call or email us. I don't see why you can't, but X2 does crazy things sometimes. And we can override like anything. So even if let's pretend that window for request closed, you're like, oh, I can't go in there anymore because it closed. But I really want to change my elective to our whatever it may be. Again, contact us. We can override it because our windows are constantly open within that scheduling and guidance. And with that being said, choose seven courses. Choose electives. Okay, so now if, you're, if your son or daughter is in band and is in ninth or 10th grade, we understand that that's your elective. You have your five majors, you have gym, and you have band. That's your schedule, okay? But if you're not in band, make sure you choose an elective because you want a seat somewhere. And it may not be there, but you created a seat for us when we run this process. If you don't put anything, You've just done us, not, didn't do us a favor, because we didn't create a seat for you somewhere. So if everybody in this school puts seven electives in, and you want to change an elective, there's hopefully a seat somewhere for you. And then be in a class that you may not want, but hopefully there's a seat for you. And the problem comes is, some kids are like, I want a study. So I'm only choosing six classes. Okay, you may get that study anyway, but now you just took a seat away from our school <laughs> when it comes to creating courses. So choose seven courses. Choose eight. Choose nine, actually, if you want. Because then I know if you don't get into something, I know who you wanted. You know what I'm saying? Choose ten. I don't care. Because then I don't have to call you and say, you didn't get into this, but how about this? Is there an option, like, when you're picking the classes to do what you just said? Like, I want this, but if I don't take this, I'll take this, then maybe this, then maybe this. So there, you can oversubscribe. Do it that way. And, and on top of oversubscribing, go into that notes and say, in order of electives, I want this, this, and this. 
That's perfect. That's, that's like my dream come true. Because as I'm sitting in my pool in the summertime, I don't have to call you and drop my cell phone in the water. <laughs> my laptop might be still in there, but... Any other questions? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Okay. Okay. No, don't apologize. What is your recommendation for, let's just say, a junior and a senior? What do you recommend for how many AP courses that they take? Like, is three too many? Is two good? What do you? What have you seen throughout your career? Yeah. What we've picked. I, I don't like to see over three. I sometimes even think three is too many. Mm -hmm. But there are students that can handle that kind of rigor. Like, it, it. it really is a student. Um, it is up to the student. However, again, I'm, I want parent involved as well, you know, and I also want them to be able to breathe. And there are some students who can do four or five. I would never, ever, ever, ever recommend it, ever. But you know what? I'm your guidance counselor for four years and you're going on in life. You're not going to remember me. If you want to do it, do it, but it's not really going to be something I highly suggest. So and I don't recommend AP on... Probably two, maybe three, but maybe three. probably two. Maybe three. And it depends what the course is too. Like is is it um like is it is it AP Calc, AP Chem, and AP World or AP Lang. You know, those AP Calc classes are hard and those AP science classes are hard. Why are you sitting next to your mom to do that? <laughs> Engage in the rigor. Engage because a C or a B in an AP class is okay. Then not taking it at all. And if you have a bump in the road, you know this is a little bit away from program of studies, but things happen in people's lives. In four years, things could happen in your family, and your kids affected by it, and their grades go down. We need to know that because we can explain that in a recommendation letter to a college. But if we don't, if it goes down and there's no words to go with it, you, it's you know we can't help you. But you know if something happens, stuff happens, and we see that in kids sometimes, and we need to explain that. And colleges are understanding as long as we explain it. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you for joining us tonight. My kid's thanking you because he hasn't seen me since 5.30 this morning, and he loves being home by himself. <laughs> All the lights in my house are on, like at the airport. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs>